Welcome back. The last session we have gone through the Bayer Savart law applications and we understood ampere circuit law and its application. Now the main concept of this magnetic effect subcurrent that is the motion of charged particle inside magnetic field. The motion of a charged particle. So first of all we have to know what is the force experienced by charged particle what is the force experienced by charged particle so we know very well that f is going to be nothing but q into v bar cross b bar this is the the force expression the force experienced by the charge which is moving with the velocity v inside the magnetic field b so this in simplified version can be written as q v b sin theta here theta is nothing but angle between the direction of motion or direction of velocity and direction of magnetic field intensity and so this force is going to be the maximum the maximum force is going to be equals to q v b when theta equals to 90 degrees that means if the magnetic field and velocity vector magnetic field and velocity vector are perpendicular to each other we will have a, a maximum force now the question arises what is the direction of this force the direction of the force is given by fleming left hand rule what is the fleming left hand rule if i stretch my thumb forefinger and center finger like this then so if i think the fourth finger shows the direction of a field the center finger shows the direction of motion of charged particle the thumb shows direction of a force this is the fleming left hand rule and now let us see the motion of a charged particle so here we understood what is the force experienced by charged particle inside the magnetic field based on this concept we are going to understand how the motion of a charged particle takes place inside the magnetic field that is uniform magnetic field here we are speaking about only uniform magnetic field so let us suppose here i have a uh, different cases let us see the cases like this three cases are there case one let us suppose this is the direction of a magnetic field and the charged particle entered into the field in the same direction as that of a field. Then what will be happen? The case 2. Case 2 is let us suppose this is the direction of a uniform magnetic field and the charged particle is entering into the field perpendicular to it. This is the direction of a velocity, this is the direction of a magnetic field. What will happen? We will see. The case 3. Case 3 is nothing but the same uniform magnetic field is here, but the now the charged particle is entering into the magnetic field which is making an angle of theta with the magnetic field. So, this is the direction of velocity vector, this is the direction of a magnetic field. Now, we will see the three cases separately one by one. Now, case 1, what is that? Magnetic field and velocity vector both are along the same direction. Since V and V are parallel to each other, what is going to be the force experienced by the charged particle? That is going to be 0 because Q V B sin 0, that is going to be Q 0. Therefore, since the force equals to 0, the acceleration is equals to 0. Therefore, the charged particle will continue to move with a uniform velocity along a straight line. Therefore, the charged particle will move in straight line with constant velocity with constant velocity this is what will happen when the charged particle enters into the field along its direction now let us compare case 2 what is the case 2 the charged particle is entering perpendicular to the magnetic field now in this case the force is going to be the maximum that is nothing but q v b and this force will supply or it will provides the necessary centripetal force for a charged particle to execute the circular motion therefore the centripetal force is nothing but mv square by r where r is nothing but radius of a circular path executed by the charged particle which is equals to q v b now v v get cancelled and i will get the radius of a circular path as m v divided by q b mv divided by qb and further let me give you some more information related to this so just after this i will go with the case 3 again i will draw there no problem so here i have a 
extension for this topic r equals to m v by q v and generally m into v is nothing but momentum so momentum divided by the q into v this can be also written as 2 m e because the relationship between momentum and kinetic energy is nothing but 2 m e here e stands for kinetic energy usually the charged particles will get energy through the when they are accelerated through potential difference therefore i can also write e equals to q into capital v where capital v stands for potential here this small v stands for momentum now this small v stands for velocity so here i can also write like 2m times of q into potential divided by q into capital b and this will gives me the result 1 by v times of under root 2m capital v divided by q this is going to be the radius of a circular path for a charged particle which is entering into the magnetic field after accelerating through a potential of v volt well and let us try to find out what is the time period what is the time period we all know that when the charged particle is moving in a circular path definitely it will have a angular velocity which will be given by the formula omega equals to v by r right so now uh, v equals to r omega now what is the v let it be like v only and what is the r mv by qb m v by q b therefore get cancel out i will be get q b divided by m now actually i am interested to find what is the time period of revolution so omega equals to 2 pi by capital t therefore t will be equals to 2 pi m divided by q b from here what we can observe the time period is independent of velocity of a particle it is wholly depend upon its mass charge and the magnetic field intensity and let us move for case 3 what is the case 3 the case 3 is nothing but the charged particle is entering into magnetic field which makes certain angle with the direction of magnetic field then let us look at this the case 3 we are going to see now case 3 what is the case 3 let us suppose this is the uniform magnetic field whose direction is given like this and the charged particle is entering into the field with a velocity v that makes some angle theta here with the direction of a magnetic field now this velocity can be resolved into two components one is the v cos theta another one is the v sin theta since that v sin theta is perpendicular to magnetic field that velocity component will be responsible for having a circular motion and therefore what we can write we can write so we already know what is the radius of a circular path which is nothing but mv by qb but in this case this velocity will be replaced by v sin theta because this v sin theta is perpendicular to magnetic field therefore the radius is given by mv sin theta divided by qb and what is the time period that is will be always 2 pi m divided by q b just now we have understood that it is independent of velocity therefore even it is entering with a velocity v which is making some angle theta also time period do not changes now what will be use of this v cos theta because of v cos theta it will try to move up therefore the combination of v cos theta and v sin theta will makes a charged particle to move in a helical path like this moving a helical path this circular motion is due to v sin theta the vertical motion is due to v cos theta due to the v cos theta it has a displacement in upward direction now regarding this helical path we have to define one important term that is pitch what is the meaning of pitch pitch is nothing but the distance traveled by charged particle in the time of one time of revolution with a velocity v cos theta with a velocity v cos theta in the time of one time of revolution how far it has went up how far it has went up that is going to be called as a pitch now what is a t v cos theta multiplied by 2 pi m divided by q b this is called as a the pitch of the path 
for a helical path this is defined as a pitch now this is what about briefly the motion of a charged particle inside the magnetic field now based on these concepts like the motion of a charged particle inside the magnetic field we are going to deal with some illustrations let me start up now so here i have some illustrations yes here i have a illustration here like this i think i have to go with one more small concept then i will back to illustrations one is the lorentz force lorentz force what is the lorentz force lorentz force is nothing but if if a charged particle is moving through the both electric and magnetic fields region then it will experience a force due to the electric field and a force due to the magnetic field this net force is called as a lorentz force generally if q is a charged particle charge of the charged particle and if e is a electric field intensity then q into e bar is nothing but the force experienced by the charged particle due to the electric field then what about the magnetic force that is can be written as q into v bar cross v bar then shall i take out the q as a common then i will get e bar plus v bar cross v bar and this part called as a lorentz force this is what called as a lorentz force and here one important thing is that what is that is let us suppose the net force acting on the charged particle is zero even after entering into a perpendicular electric and magnetic fields then what will be left out e is going to be equals to v into v and v equals to e by v this is called as a velocity selector with this velocity the charged particle is entering into a uniform perpendicular electric and magnetic field then the charged particle will go no deviation with no deviation this is called as a velocity selector and now uh, as i told you we will back for problems now so here is the one problem that i have like this three charged particles proton neutron and alpha particle okay so here we have the question like this three charged particles they named it as proton neutron and alpha particle are accelerated through same potential and are entered into uniform magnetic field perpendicularly we have to find their ratio of kinetic energies and their ratio of radii this is for the problem so previously i have already told you what is that if the charged particle is having the charge q and if it is accelerated through potential v then the kinetic energy acquired by them is nothing but k which is equals to q into v 
of course now the same thing can be applied for our concept what is that so they are asking to find out the ratio right the kinetic energy of proton the kinetic energy of neutron the kinetic energy of alpha particle must be equals to the charge of proton into v is to the charge of neutron into v is to the charge of alpha particle into v can i note down like this then v v v get cancelled what is the charge on the proton generally it will be e the charge on the neutron is also e only the charge on the alpha particle is 2e because the neutron is nothing but what h 1 2 the proton is nothing but h 1 1 alpha particle is nothing but helium 2 4 therefore the charge on the neutron is nothing but 1 that's why i have written here e just like a proton and the charge on the helium particle is nothing but 2 2 e so their ratio will be 1 is to their ratio will be 1 is to 1 is to 2 this is the ratio of the kinetic energies now what i have to find out the ratio of radii so since the charged particles entered perpendicularly they will execute the circular motion for a circular motion what is the radius we have no already that uh, radius is given by the formula r equals to mv divided by qb and this can be also written as root of 2me divided by q into b now this formula we are going to apply now so more clearly shall we note down like this one 2m into q capital v divided by qb so this is what 1 by b times of under root 2m v by q so this is what the radius of a charged particle now this formula shall we apply for pushing well so the radius of proton the radius of neutron the radius of alpha particle i want to find the ratio now let me substitute the information one by one for all of them magnetic field density will be same for all of them the 2m capital V stands for capital V which is nothing but potential. Potential is also same. Therefore, what will be the ratio? Root of m by q. This will be different for each of them. That's what we are going to write now. For a proton, what I can write the root of m by q? Root of mass of a proton divided by the charge is nothing but E. Then is to for a deuteron, mass of the deuteron divided by the charge is again E is to the mass of a alpha particle divided by 2e this is going to be the charge for alpha particle now further what i can write mp divided by e is to what is the mass of a deuteron it's a twice of the mass of the proton therefore 2mp divided by e is to under root what is the mass of an alpha particle four times of mass of the proton four times of mass of the proton divided by 2e then what we are going to get here we are going to get root of mp by e root of mp by e root of mp e will get cancelled out we will be left with 1 is 2 root 2 is 2 root 2 1 is 2 root 2 is 2 root 2 this is what we are going to obtain so 2m q v divided by q b 1 by b of 2m by q well so what is the ratio 1 is 2 root 2 is 2 root 2 this is going to be the the ready of the ratio of ready of all the three charged particles this is the one sum, one illustration let us go for another illustration now
Well, so here this is the question that we have to understand. When a proton is released from rest in a room, it starts with the initial acceleration of A naught towards the rest. Now, first of all, let us try to draw east, west, and this the north, south. So here is a room where I have kept the charger particle, I mean the proton at rest. This is a proton at rest. And when I release it, then immediately it has starts moves towards the west. And then when it is projected towards the north, that means the same charged particle inside the magnetic field, it is projected towards the north like this. This is not an upward direction, towards the north in the sense like this. Towards the north when it is projected with the velocity v naught, it moves with an initial acceleration of 3 a naught towards the west. Again, it will have an acceleration of towards the west due to the magnetic field. What is the electric and magnetic fields present in the room that we have to find out. So here, let us start up to here. So what is this one? It starts with initial acceleration of A0 towards the west. Therefore, this is a proton. Usually proton will be attracted towards the electric field. I mean attracted towards the negative charges. So my I will have an electric field from positive to negative usually. Therefore, the electric field intensity is in this way. And furthermore, since they have given the acceleration, I can write like acceleration A0 is nothing but F equals to MA, right? Therefore, what I can write? Q into E divided by mass of a proton. Where Q is nothing but charge. That shall I call it is a proton E? Well, so A naught is nothing but E into E divided by M. From here, what is the electric field intensity? M A naught divided by E. This is going to be the electric field intensity. And what is the direction? along i mean it is since it is accelerating towards the west that is going to be the direction of a electric field intensity so we understood what is the direction of a electric field and what is the magnitude now let us know what is the direction of magnetic field and what is its magnitude well so here shall i clear it up okay so now within the same row it is projected with a velocity v naught and towards the north so towards the north it is projected with a velocity v naught now inside the magnetic field since it is projected normally it will experience a maximum force and what we are calling it as in q v v that velocity is nothing but v naught what is the magnetic charge that is going to be e what is the force i can call it like a m into a what is the a now acceleration the acceleration they have given as a 3 a naught which is nothing but the sum of acceleration which is already it acquired plus the acceleration due to the magnetic field that means 3 a naught minus a naught that is nothing but 2m a naught that equals to e into v naught into b this is how we have to understand and the magnetic field magnitude is nothing but what 2m a naught divided by v naught this is going to be the magnetic field magnitude now the question arises what is the direction now we can use our Fleming left hand rule. What's the Fleming left hand rule? The center finger shows the direction of a field. The thumb shows the direction of a force. And the center finger, sorry, four finger shows the field. Center finger shows the direction of a motion of charged particle. Since it is projected towards the north, that means what? I can say right like this. So this is the direction of a motion of a charged particle. And how it is accelerated towards the west. Therefore, this must be the direction of a field. Therefore, this forefinger is showing the direction downward. Hence, the direction of the field is nothing but downwards. It is down. Shall I repeat again? So, here from east, west, north, south, it is projected along the north. Along the north in the sense, not up like this. The central figure shows the direction of the motion. Well, the force is nothing but towards, I mean, along the thumb. The force is towards the west. Therefore, this is the direction of the west. And here it is nothing but what? Down. So, inside the row, the magnetic field is in down. It is projected north and the force will be in sphere. Hence, what you can write now? The magnitude of magnetic field intensity is 2 m a naught by v naught and the direction is down. 
that's the end of this small session in this session we understood about the applications and the motion of a charged particle inside the magnetic field in the forthcoming session we are going to understand some concepts like the torque experienced by the loop the force between two parallel conductors and how to convert galvanometer into ammeter and galvanometer into voltmeter all that small things we are going to understand in the next session thank you